I'm Dr. Bob Aklarian from Center for Advanced Product and Facial Nerve Surgery. Today we're going to discuss the case of a young woman with a small parotid tumor that was benign uh, who underwent the microparotidectomy. This is the young woman. As you can see, you, you don't see the mass itself. It's very small and under the ear. She felt it by palpating this area, after which she underwent a needle biopsy. You can see the needle here going through the tumor. And as it goes through it, in the, some of the cells get in the hollow bore of the needle, and then we can put it on a slide and look at it under the microscope. In the past two and a half decades that I've been doing this, I haven't had a single case of a tumor spreading because of a needle biopsy done by me, by anyone around here or elsewhere. Um, fortunately, it doesn't happen by a needle biopsy. Core biopsies are, are a little different because they're more substantial. So once we got the results, the results are usually reported in a Milan system. And for her, it was benign. And as you can see, <clears throat> when the needle biopsy says that your biopsy is benign, there is less than a 5% chance that that may not be accurate. So the needle biopsies are very, very good and accurate. The tumor was a pleomorphic adenoma, which is the most common type of tumor that happens in the product gland. Fortunately, it's benign. Um, it is usually well contained, but these tumors have little legs, right, that protrude out. Uh, in addition to that, they have a genetic makeup that's precancerous. So some of the cells inside can transform into a cancer if left behind for a while, and one cancer cell will turn into two, two into four, and over time it grows and grows. If you catch this tumor and do surgery at a stage where the cancer is contained within the capsule of the tumor and you remove it with a little bit of extra part of tissue, that's already curative. You don't need anything else. You don't need radiation, chemotherapy, anything else. Just a simple surgery will cure it. So if you're fortunate enough to either remove it when it hasn't transformed into a cancer or when it's contained within the tumor, then that surgery already cures you. But as the cancer progresses and starts coming out of the capsule, then it becomes more aggressive, spreads, and you, it's very hard to cure at that point. And that's the main reason to remove these tumors at an early point. Traditionally, product surgery is done with uh, what's called a modified Blair incision, which is an incision that goes from in front of the ear to behind. And that incision is a very good one when someone has a cancer in the product gland that has spread to the lymph nodes in the neck. And so the surgery involves removing the product gland and the lymph nodes in the neck. And I still use some version of this incision for cancers that have spread. But to do this incision for someone who has a small benign tumor, a tumor that's less than five, six centimeters, is it doesn't make sense because you don't need to access this area when your tumor is limited to this area. All right, so this is an over operation. So years ago, once I realized that I tried to modify my incision to make it more minimal, minimalistic and I used the mo uh, modified facelift incision, all right? And over time, as I became comfortable with it, about 17 years ago, I shortened the incision to its now modern form, which is the microparotidectomy incision, which starts in front of the ear and then goes in the groove behind the ear. And you may wonder, well, this is not gonna give access to all the areas, but in actuality, this is a picture of the surgery of this uh, of one of my patients, and you can see you can see the full extent of the facial nerve, and you can see the facial nerve starting here, coming out of the skull, and then going to multiple branches, and all of these branches are visible through this small axis. That's because the skin in the face is very pliable, and you can move it around and access all the areas. These are the steps of the surgery. So the first step is to make the incision right there, which is marked in the green line there, right? As you notice, I have the facial nerve probes on the face, so I can monitor the functioning of all the branches of the facial nerve here, right? Uh, then the next step, once I make the incision, is to find the greater auricular nerve. This is the nerve that comes from behind this muscle and goes to this earlobe and the skin of the face. It's in charge of sensation of the earlobe and the skin here. This nerve is immediately under the skin. So once I make the incision, I find this nerve and then I push it out of the way. So that way I have access to all areas of the parotid gland for whatever surgery I may need to do. 
advantage of doing this is not only to preserve the nerve, but it also causes uh, numbness in the area of the surgery, so patients don't have a lot of pain. The majority of my patients just take Tylenol after surgery. This is not a very painful surgery as it's done this way. The next step is to find the branches of the facial nerve in the immediate vicinity of the tumor. Once I know where those branches are, then I can remove the tumor and an additional bit of parotid tissue around it for safety and to prevent recurrence. Now, if you notice, the skin here has been raised and under the skin is this layer called the SMAS layer. The SMAS layer is a very thick, hardy layer which plastic surgeons use to do a facelift. It starts around here and goes to the area of the ear so they can be, use it for a facelift. I use it for reconstruction and to separate the parotid gland from the skin to prevent Frey syndrome, which is sweating when you get hungry, when you eat, easily preventable by doing a reconstruction. Now, in these cases, when the defect is small enough where I can bring the two edges of the product together, that's what I'll do. And that's what I did in this case. I brought the two edges together and then I can put the skin and the SMAS layer down over this reconstructed product. And once that's done, the product is separated from the skin by the SMAS layer, so I won't get Frey syndrome. It also gives me a good contour and smooth contour, so the two sides of the face look even. And you can see the incision is here, which has been closed with, with plastic surgery sutures under the surface, right? So there's no sutures to remove, and there's no, um, there's no drains that I need to use for this surgery, which is a huge advantage. Uh, when, when I have the tumor being small enough where I, my reconstruction can be more limited. And that's one of the other reasons to, to have the surgery done at, at, at a earlier stage so yet you have a less complicated reconstruction. And this is the marking for the surgery. This is the incision here, right? And obviously you can see the marking for the tumor there. And here's the surgery. And I've transformed it into animation, so there's no grotesque parts to it. First, I put the facial nerve probes, the red and blue, and then I make the incision there, retract the skin with retractors, then I raise the SMAS layer, and then start, try to find the facial nerve, and then start removing the tumor and, and extra product tissue, and the tumor's coming out now as we speak. There you go. And then I clear the area and do the reconstruction, of the SMAS layer and the prodded, and then suturing the skin with sutures under the surface. And once the surgery is done, I remove the probes and then I put a drape around it to put pressure on this area. Um, and the next, I before I do the closure, after I remove the tumor, I always do testing of the facial nerves. So you'll see that I'm stimulating the branches close by to make sure they're all functioning. So before the surgery is done, I know that the facial nerve is healthy, right? And I can show it to you so you know that your facial nerve is safe and functioning properly as well. And this is the tumor itself. Well, you can't actually see the tumor because the tumor is in the middle of this uh, material that I removed. Majority of what you see is the product gland, the extra product gland around it with an extra margin of safety to prevent recurrence. And these are the pictures of before and after surgery for this young lady. And let me zoom in to the after pictures. And there you can see the incision right there, which is barely visible. And this is only a week after surgery. So she's healed very well. And these are frontal views of the same thing showing um, showing the reconstructed face and how symmetric and um, harmonious it is. There, she still has a little bit of extra swelling there, so you don't see this curve there on the face, and it's only after a week after surgery. So in a few weeks, that all becomes very much even. And now you're going to see her testimonial and her experience as she went through this. Hi guys, my name is Jessica, and um, I recently got a parotid tumor removed with Dr. Larian. I'm actually seven days post-op now, so I'm, I'm a week post-op. Um, so about, just to give you a little bit of my story, about two months ago, I was diagnosed with a um, parotid tumor, which was a pretty scary diagnosis to get. Um, and I started to 
do a lot of research um, because I knew that the facial nerve runs through the parotid gland. So I was aware that there was a lot at risk if something went wrong with the surgery and that um, it's a pretty uncommon tumor. So I really wanted someone that was the most experienced person um, to do the surgery on me since it is such a delicate surgery. So as I said, I had done a lot of research and um, you know, I, I met several um, specialists for uh, parotid tumors and I felt um, after meeting Dr. Larian that he was just the right doctor for me. He just seemed to be on another level um, than the other doctors that I met. And he gave me a great sense of comfort and a knowingness that everything would be okay. Um, something that I, I didn't really feel from anyone else that I met with. Um, so. I'm uh, happy to report that the surgery went great. As I mentioned, I'm seven days post-op. I have full facial function. I have no side effects whatsoever, which was a huge relief. Um, and I'm gonna show you my incision right now. It's super, super tiny. So you might be able to see it um, right at the base of my ear. It's super tiny. <laughs> it's healing beautifully. And one other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, all, like all the other doctors I met with wanted to do a much more invasive surgery. They wanted to make an incision behind my ear and then bring that incision all the way down my neck, which would have not only left me with a much bigger scar, but um, could have also created much more complications in the surgery and would have required a much longer recovery for me. So I am so happy that I found Dr. Larian of his micro parotidectomy technique. Um, he is just, a, he is a true healer and um, you are in amazing hands if you choose him. It is so worth it. Thank you for your attention. If you're interested in clear product information and minimally invasive ways to treat product disease, visit us at productmd.com. Be well.